been living the law of attraction for probably ever since I was in my 20s. I didn't even know I was doing it then, just something I naturally did. So then now it's become a field of study. There are books out by everybody. Everybody and their uncle has a website on it. And yet a lot of people are using it and still not achieving the goals they want. So we're going to take a look at what is it that's blocking us? What are some of the un exercised pieces of the technology that need to be focused on. I love this, it says, this life is a test, it is only a test. If it had been an actual life, you would have received further instructions on where to go and what to do. That was a sign that I saw on a uh, person's cubicle in a company that I worked with. And so I thought, that's pretty uh, accurate. You know, most of us don't have a guidebook about how to live the perfect life. We weren't born with an operator's manual. You know, your, your VCR has more instructions in it than most of us got growing up. And when you look at your life and you think about what you learned in school, most of what we learned in school we never use. It means when the last time you quoted the five causes of the Civil War to anybody, you know? And that never happened. And yet, only about 3% of kids going to school in America ever learn about setting goals, how to control their own mood states and emotional states, uh, learning about universal principles and laws and relationships, communication skills, values, ethics, the things that really matter in our life. Now, what I did, I did a book. I put a book together a couple years ago. It's called The Success Principles, How to Get from Where You Are to Where You Want to Be. It has 64 principles in it. And we're going to look at some of those tonight because they relate to law of attraction. I'm also going to draw upon the movie The Secret and the book The Secret, which I was featured in along with 23 other people. How many of you have seen The Secret, by the way? Can I see a show of hands? Almost everybody. How many have not, just to make sure? Okay, about a fourth. So what happens is a lot of people, they're doing a lot of it, but it's not working. And one of the reasons is because they're sitting there visualizing and thinking it's all going to work. They just have to have a good feeling, create a vibrational match, ask, believe, receive, and sit in their bedroom and a Cadillac will show up in their garage, you know? <laughs> and unless you live at the bottom of a hill, like where a T is, you know, uh, it's not likely. And so there's that. And the other thing that's stopping people is that they're not addressing the unconscious limiting beliefs that are below the threshold of awareness that are stopping you. So we're going to take a look tonight about how to deal with both of those issues. But let's go ahead and talk about this. If you could, would you rather take the short route or the long route to success? Short route. That makes sense? Yeah. So wouldn't it make sense just to do that? Yeah. Turbo mouse. Just like go right for the cheese. Because too many of us, literally, we get lost in the maze. You know, we're not clear. We get stuck. We just go down cul-de-sac. We just want to be able to go straight to it. And what I've devoted my life to, literally the last 33 years, since I met W. Clement Stone, who was my mentor, who introduced me to the Law of Attraction, although at that time he called it the power of positive thinking and the power of positive expectancy. What, what, what happened was, I've really been intrigued with, how do you go faster, further, with less effort? What we're going to share tonight is the mental aspect of doing that. How can we go where we want to go further without expending as much effort? That doesn't mean no action. Remember we said action? But action that you enjoy, action that's fun, action that goes like, wow, this is really cool. I get to do this. Amazing. I mean, I get to stand here and talk to you about things I care about and get paid ridiculous amounts of money and make a DVD that other people that couldn't get here will get to see and pay me money for and have their life change and then get hundreds of letters a week about you changed my life. That's fun, okay? I do that for free. I do. Probably 20 times a year, 10, 20 times a year. I do them for nonprofit organizations. And if I was retired, which I don't ever plan to because I'm having too much fun, but if I were, I'm sure I'd go out and give free talks and write more books because when I'm not, I'm not happy. You know, I think it was Thomas Edison said, when your vocation becomes your vacation, you've reached the pinnacle in life. You know, that what you love, you're, you know, do you think Oprah's having fun? I mean, I've been on a show. She's having fun. She's having fun when she's making movies. She's having fun when she's doing her show. She's having fun building that school in Africa, doing all the things she does when she can give everyone in the audience a car. You don't think that's a trip? You know, that's fun. And so when Tiger Woods is playing golf, when Andrea Agassi is playing tennis, they're having fun. So you want to figure out, and one of the things we talk about in Law of Attraction is follow your bliss, follow your heart, do what you love, the money will follow. Create the vibrational match for bringing in more by doing the things that make you feel good. So Law of Attraction is always at work. People say, well, it's not working in my life. I have the worst luck ever. You know? Well, guess what? They're focusing on what? The worst luck ever. And go, they get more of it. More bad luck. Okay? So whatever you think about, focus on, you're going to get more of. And the reality is most people 
spend their entire life talking about reality. And what you have to do if you're going to become successful with the law of attraction is talk about your vision, talk about what you want, talk about how you're expecting it to happen. You know, my main mentor was a guy named W. Clement Stone. He was an inverse paranoid. He literally thought the world was plotting to do him good all the time. You know? And he talked about it. I mean, you know, literally, uh, I remember when he was talking to this guy um, whose house had just fallen in the ocean in California. They do that on the edge of the ocean sometimes, you know. And the guy said, well, what good's going to come from this? And Stone actually helped him figure out what the good was. And I had a client recently, their car broke down on the side of the road. And they're going, well, this, how can this be good? The person that pulled over to help him, they end up marrying him. Okay, so you never know.